Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the huge slate for tonight, Tuesday, August 9th, uh, the MLB slate. And we're going to be doing it solo, which means, for those of you who have not seen uh, my solo videos before, is that I'm not going to go game by game like I do when I'm with Bobby. I'd like to take kind of a full top-down slate view approach to, you know, to analyzing the slate. Um, now, again, this is a little bit early, so there are going to be lineup changes that come in later. And the other thing is that, you know, when it comes down to it with baseball, uh, usually when it gets closer to lock, I'll kind of use Saberson to run a, uh, a build for, you know, MME for 30 to 40 lineups and such. So it might be that the teams I highlight here are not going to be ones I even have that much of. Um, it just kind of depends on how my builds work out a little bit later. But what this does is it gives you an idea of who looks the best. And, and it's really helpful for single entry, really helpful for three max. And what I'm going to do, because I'm doing it solo and we don't always get a chance to do this, is I'm going to go back and forth between my, uh, my projection sheet, which is usually only available for premium members, um, and the DK app, um, to show you kind of how I look at the slate and how close some pitchers are to one another and what ownership discounts you might be able to get. And I think this is a good way to at least prepare you for that important time, which is probably the last hour before lock where you get the lineup changes and you get better ownership and you can really build your lineups. I do recommend that everybody come to the 6 p.m. live uh, show where Bobby and perhaps uh, I will be there, you know, taking questions and all that stuff. And I get a lot out of that because quite honestly, Bobby's better at this than I am. So I'm able to, you know, to pick his brain and, and break some ties and all that stuff. Okay. So here's the slate. Now, the first thing you'll uh, want to point out to you is that these first two games are uh, not these first two games, the Toronto Baltimore game and the um, yeah. And the Philly game are both uh, both have weather concerns. And so you have to, you know, we have to wait <laughs> to, to make decisions on that. And these two games are kind of key games on the slate. So you can't just ignore them. You have to really just kind of wait and kind of figure out how you want to attack this. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to give an overall look at the slate. And what this is, is this is kind of my version of the MLB sheets, which I put up on the, the site for, again, for, um, for premium members. And what this does is it basically aggregates most of the projections from around the industry. And what it also does is it kind of weights them based on, on accuracy, which I've kind of just, you know, tested a couple of times. Um, and I, sometimes I'll tweak them a little bit because of my own takes and my own views and things like that. But they're generally kind of an aggregation of what the industry is, is projecting. And usually the way the law of lar large numbers works is the more intelligent predictions you have into a, into a set, you know, the more likely that that is going to be accurate. That's just the way life and statistics works. So in any case, um, one thing that you will notice, um, we'll get back to Corey Dickerson in a minute, but the top plays, these pitchers, this is as crunched, as you can get. Um, now I'm ranking these by sheets value score, which is essentially my own uh, formula, which combines both um, salary upside, excuse me, uh, upside points per dollar, things like that. And this is the way I usually rank the players in most every sport that I analyze. And when it comes to pitching, this is almost unprecedented um, to have all these pitchers so close to one another ranking by sheets value score. Um, usually you'll have one or two standouts and then kind of a drop off, but this is, this is almost unreal. Um, so what that means is that if you can get any of these guys at somewhat reduced ownership, then you're going to want to do that. Okay. Because they're not going to project all that differently. And, and the other thing is that a lot of these, some of these pitchers, almost all of them do have like upside as well. In other words, they're not have just, they don't have just good median projections. They have real strong upside and we're going to get to them in a minute. And the other thing is I, I have this early ownership projections and, you know, ownership usually at least theoretically follows projection, right? You're very rarely going to get an incredibly projected player. That's, that's zero own. And, and as you'll see, 
the ownership is pretty spread out as well among these guys. So um, that is definitely something to think about as you approach the slate. Um, is this not going to be the slate where you probably, you know, lock in two chalky pitchers, right? And then just spread out the, uh, spread out the hitting. What I think is probably the right thing to do on the slate is to, you know, spread out the pitching a little bit and maybe, you know, go concentrated on some of the stacks as we'll get to a little bit, but let's take a look at these. You have Shane Bieber at the top. Um, he has a really good score and he's, he has obviously upside. Then you have this Urkuti, who is kind of a value play, 7,100. Um, and what's interesting is, is there's nobody the, – the other guy that's in his range is Marcus Stroman. Um, but I, I do have Urkuti rated significantly higher than him. And when you go down here, the couple of things that you'll notice is, is first of all, you'll see uh, $5,400 Tommy Henry. And if you're playing the slate to pay up for hitting – this becomes rather useful. So I think that he's definitely in play. The, the thing that's, and and then also, you know, even Caprillion in the 5,600. So I think that, you know, depending on what you want to do hitting wise, there are a lot of different options within the pitchers. Um, you could pay all the way up for Otani and Cole. Certainly that's okay. I have, for whatever reason, wheel or rain a little bit behind them, but not by a lot. So, you know, it's, it's really splitting hairs between a 42 value score and a 37. Um, um, is it splitting hairs? I mean, it's a, it's somewhat significant, but not that much. Um, but as Philly does have those weather concerns, I think that's something that you have to you know factor in. The guy here who is interesting to me when I first look at it is Freddie Peralta, and the reason why is he's right in the mix of these guys as far as value score and all that stuff. But I have him at only three percent ownership. So this is the type of things I really want to do a little more research on. Um, one thing I remember is that he was coming back from a long injury. And in his last, his first uh, start back, um, they only gave him 67 pitches. Um, so the question is, is he going to get a full load here, a full workload here? Um, and, and I guess that's why his ownership is going to be kept somewhat low because he's up against Bieber, Cole, Wheeler, these guys who are going to have like 100 pitches. And while Peralta does have a great deal of upside, if he's restrained at all by his pitch count, that's going to be uh, it's going to be really tough for him to get there. So we're going to have to watch the the, the 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 manager speak to see if there's any limitations on him. If there's no limitations on him, I think this is an extremely strong ownership play uh, tonight. So um, that is definitely something to think about. Um, so again, just to kind of summarize here, then we'll then we'll go back into the app, the the Dra DraftKings site, and see who these guys are playing. So I would say all these guys are about the same, like Bieber, Otani, Cole, Carrasco, Peralta. I think you can play any of them, but I think Peralta that ownership is uh, was really really strong. I mean, it's a strong it's a strong situation if if you think that he's going to get a full workload. So you have to look into that a little bit, and we'll do that for you before six o'clock. And then this Urkuti play is something you really have to look into because he's clearly the SP2, you know, as far as value goes. And if he turns out to be really popular, then it's the Tommy Henry show or James Caprillion. Let's take a look at who these guys are playing, by the way. Um, remember, we didn't even take a look at that. Um, so, wow, the one guy that I didn't even show up in my, in my projections really is Alec Manoa. Um, what happened to him? Do I not have him projected for some reason? Or is he just, yeah, he's just all the way down here on the list. Okay. That's how, that's how incredible a slate it is. <laughs> you have Urias, for example, and Manoa don't even show up for me or, or Castillo. So, um, wow, that's amazing. So nobody's out of that game. Wheeler, who I mentioned before, he's home against Miami. So I imagine that he will definitely, you know, this is definitely a good matchup for him. Uh, you got to watch the weather though, so make sure that you know you're not you're not, you're not betting into a, a bad weather situation. Um, we didn't get to anybody there. So Carrasco is home against Cincinnati. That's obviously a very very strong play. Um, the Mets are a terrible matchup, and all this is so all all what I'm saying is already factored into the projections, right? So I don't really have to be going through these to explain to you why those were good plays, but just to kind of show you where this is all coming from. Uh, Cleveland at Detroit, that's where Bieber's coming from. I mean, this is like a 
dream matchup, and he's got upside. This is really strong. Um, and Urkuti, as we mentioned, is a strong value play. He's home against Texas, and Texas is kind of the pits. Um, Milwaukee, the Peralta play, he's against Tampa, and Tampa does have strikeouts. So this is a this is really is an incredible pitching slate. A lot of you can make cases for a lot of guys. This is a Coors game. We'll get back to that later. The Tommy Henry play against Pittsburgh. That makes sense. Um, I didn't get to Musgrove Beaver for some reason. This is um, it's 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 at the point where I really want to even check to make sure that I I didn't I didn't miss a projection somewhere. No, he's he's here. He just rates just a little bit below these guys, which is kind of. Amazing when you think about it. Um, Oakland, LA. If you do go to the Otani, Otani against uh, Oakland is an, obviously a dream matchup, and Caprillion against the Angels is good. This is a uh, this is this slate is, is kind of nutty. Um, Urias, we didn't get to him, and we didn't get to anybody. And Cole is uh, at Seattle. Um, that's not actually the best matchup in the world. So I would say that. Of all those pitchers that we talked about, the guy who has the toughest matchup is probably Cole. Um, so that's interesting. All right, so let's take a look at the hitting, um, and we'll rank these. We're going to pull up the stacks tool here. What this does, again, is it ranks this, the for DraftKings five-man stacks and for FanDuel four-man stacks by, again, three different, um, three different metrics. Um, on the left, if you ever get a chance to get on the site, is when we rank them just by raw points. So what we do is I take the five highest scoring or highest projected scoring players and just add up their projected points pretty much um, and put them over here. And then next to that, I have what the ownership of those players, you know, rates to be. Then in the middle, we have value stack, which is essentially the same thing, except we, we, we rank them by um, points per dollar, just straight points per dollar. So here you're going to get a whole bunch of, of cheapos, usually, okay? Um, and then in the modified stacks, that's where we actually rank these guys by sheets value score, which I alluded to a little bit earlier, and take the five best players rate, rated by sheets value score and their ownership as well. So this is the way I like to kind of look at this. The first thing I want to do is rate these guys by just raw stack. And one thing you'll notice is you have two teams that kind of stand out a little bit over the others. One is St. Louis and the other one is Atlanta, right? This is just on raw points. We're going to get back to who they play in a minute. And then you go down and then there's a, a kind of a second tier on its own between the Mets and Toronto. And then when you get down here, you have Dodgers, Arizona, right? That's another little tier. And then Philly. Okay, and then you're down to Colorado or whatever. And the one thing you'll see, though, it's it's not that much of a difference, right? This drop is not a big deal. I remember when the Dodgers were playing in Coors, for example, they had a raw stack um, projection of maybe 12, 13 points higher than the next one. So this is not that big of a deal. And as you'll see, you know, the raw ownership being up here where it is, given the fact that their raw stack does not project that much better than any of these, I think that, Make, makes for St. Louis to be someone that you could probably end up fading, even though it rates to be the top play. Um, now, the next thing I'll do, I'll, let's rank these not by value. Let's rank them by, by modified stacks. So when you rate them by modified stacks, which which is a combination of, of raw points and value, St. Louis comes up there again, and that doesn't happen all too often. So with, with that, what that indicates is that you fade this at your own risk. I mean, it's, pro I mean, it's probably the best play. And the reason why, by the way, one of the reasons why it is the best play is you have, um, what's his name? Corey Dickerson, who's a flat 2K at Coors. I mean, that's uh, that's just kind of a, you know, a misprint sort of. So he'll show up in most every stack that you run a build for. So then that's something else to keep in mind. Maybe to get different, you want to play St. Louis without playing Dickerson. That might be something that you, you consider. Uh, other guys, when you rate them by value, are you have Atlanta, Chicago, then Arizona, then Pittsburgh, and then there's a, a drop. You should drop at some point. Yeah, then there's a drop to Philly. So what I like to do when I'm trying to like, gauge like who I think the best plays are going to be, I want to see what teams show up in both the raw stack score and also the modified stack score. That doesn't happen all that often. 
someone be top or top five or whatever. So the one, the couple of teams that do that, uh, one was St. Louis. The other, as you may have saw, seen, was Atlanta. And then you have Arizona, who's another one. Arizona rated, you know, fourth in terms of value. And then in, uh, whatchamacallit, then in, um, in raw points, they're like in that third or fourth tier, you know, just before Philly. So I think that's very reasonable. So Arizona, Philly, you mentioned them. Arizona, Philly, St. Louis, Atlanta. And then I would add in Mets, Toronto, and then those other value plays, Chicago and Pittsburgh. Um, so those would be the stacks that I would probably like to attack, right? Or attack, probably like to play. So once again, St. Louis and Atlanta, the two best. But but as far as ownership goes, I would go down to Mets, Toronto, Arizona, and then Philly if they play. Now, again, Toronto also might not play. So if Toronto doesn't play and Philly doesn't play, now I'm down to St. Louis, Atlanta, and then pivoting down to Mets, Arizona. Um, another team that uh, – and then the other thing you want to do is just look through these raw points and just see who you're missing. So, like, for example, I think the Dodgers are – in this mix, as far as raw points, let me just do it again. Was the Dodgers? Um, what happened to the Dodgers? Are they not playing tonight? Of course they're playing. Where are the Dodgers? There they are. Sorry, they're right there. So right, they're right under Toronto. So, so I think you could play the Dodgers here as well because you see that they're they rate to have pretty low ownership. They're you know about the same as Arizona. So. You know, again, if you were just hand building and not using Sabersim or an optimizer and you wanted to play GPPs, what I would probably do is, is try one of those. Try like the Dodgers, try Arizona, Toronto, because St. Louis, while they're rated as the top stack, they're, they're just not rated by that much, the top stack, and their ownership is through the roof. So um, that's the way I would kind of look at it. Um, the next thing is I want to go back to the app and go through the games. And again, just, just make sure what's going on here. I want to see who's playing who again, what's happening. So Toronto, as you mentioned before, they're against Bradish. Okay, that's why they're going to be projecting well. Philly is home against Garrett. Okay. I just want to see if – I just want to make sure that I don't want to get myself into here. Atlanta is at Boston, which is favorable, and if it's against Rich Hill. Okay, so Rich Hill's not terrible, so not the greatest matchup in the world, but it's not, you know, it's not obviously it's not not bad though. Um, the Mets are against Mike Miner, and Mike Miner, uh, he's 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 actually sometimes not bad against lefties, but he hasn't been. In, you know, I haven't seen him really put up a good game in in like a long time. So I think that they could get rocked here. So I think the Mets are very very strong here. Um, then uh, we didn't get to Cleveland, Detroit. We didn't get to Chicago or Washington. Didn't get to Houston, Texas, Milwaukee. So St. Louis, as we mentioned, they're at Coors, and that's why they're going to be projecting well, et cetera. And you got Arizona. Well, hold on. Let me see they're up against. So it's a bullpen game. Um, let's get Cincinnati off my selected list here. Uh, Pittsburgh against Arizona. That was uh, Zach Thompson against Tommy Henry. That was uh, – so I had both these guys as sort of value plays, Pittsburgh and Arizona. Um, okay, I mean, not the – I mean, pretty good matchups. Not the greatest matchups, but not bad. So that makes sense. San Francisco, San Diego. Didn't get to either of them. Didn't get to Oakland, L.A. Dodgers against – who are they up against? Joe Ryan? I mean, not the best matchup, but not terrible. Right, and I didn't get to the Yankees in Seattle. So those are the pitchers. There's the stacks, but let, let's let's finish this up by um, taking a look at some individual plays as well. Um, oh, this is FanDuel, so I that. Um, and you'll see this as we get closer to the lot. So you see, as I mentioned before, uh, Dickerson just is kind of like a through the roof value here. And then you have these other St. Louis guys like like Root Bar. He's twenty three hundred. Some of these Atlanta guys, Robbie Grossman, he gets in his 2K. Beerling from Philly is 2,100. There's a lot of real cheapos on this slate here. Molina, 2,200 at Coors. Wow. Acuna, only 5,100. 
De Jong, 3,500 St. Louis. Yeah, so these St. Louis guys are really cheap. That's why they're going to be really popular. But it's a 15-game slate, you know, or a 14-game slate. You, you, you just – it's not so easy to beat 13 teams like that. So I guess that's pretty much it, except, you know what, you want to have some fun? All right, let's have some fun. I'm going to I'm gonna build my um, – I'm going to do a Saber Sim build. Now, this is early in the day, right? But – why not? Let's see. Let's see what it comes up with. I can't imagine what it would what it would do here. I, you know, I know exactly what it would do. I bet you that it just jams all the signals. What do you think? And again, I'm doing this kind of the long way. If you're again a true DFS member with a with a Saberson subscription, you could go ahead and just go straight to the site, and there's a Saberson page where you where it automatically uploads my projections if that's what you want to use. Um, so, but I have my own little file here. So let's upload here. And let's build, let's build one, uh, one of uh, Matt Carpenter's out. Okay, let's go out players. But let's build 150 just to see what we come up with and a pool size of 1500. Now, I refer you to all the tutorials we've done on how to use Saberson to know what's going on right here. But what it's doing is it's taking my projections. It's building 1,500 lineups, right, as a pool of lineups. And then I've decided that I want to enter 150 of them. So it's, what it's going to do, it's going to give me 150, the top 150. And so you might ask, what's the other 1,350 for? That's if you make changes after the build. It's got these lineups all ready to go. That uh, that's ready. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause this for just a minute while this uh, while this runs. Then I'll be right back. Okay. So not surprisingly, St. Louis shows up as all kinds of stuff. You got 77 percent St. Louis, 42 percent Atlanta. Right. Um, what's interesting is that across the entire 1500. They're only 52%. Um, anyway, St. Louis and Atlanta, then Toronto, as I mentioned, Pittsburgh, good value. And then as far as pitching goes, um, Bieber's the best. And then it's got – that's pre pretty spread, actually. Rakuti, Cole, Otani, just all the guys I mentioned. Um, okay, so that will do it. Uh, I encourage you to join us at – or at least Bobby. I'm not sure how I'm going to be there at 6 for last-minute changes and things like that. And you know, take take your questions. But other than that, I hope this was helpful and good luck on tonight's very, very large stuff.